I'm Adrian. And I'm Jeff. And we're at Birdloft in Tacoma, Washington. We make custom furniture. Jeff and I met in architecture school in Seattle, and we started doing remodels of people's homes around town. And that's kind of how Birdloft got started, actually. Right, and so at every job we were doing, there was always the demo, and, and so I would come across all this wood and I would be in charge of filling the, the truck bed with it and putting it away somewhere. So we kind of surrounded the, the building with old wood and, you know, it looked great. <laughs> we, it was a beautiful place to pass by. So we figured we had to start making stuff. Yeah, yeah. We both took this um, studio furniture design class and it was so much fun. We learned a ton of techniques. Jeff had set up an Etsy presence and it grew and grew. And so that's when I started working with Jeff. We started designing more furniture. Clients find us online, uh, either on our Etsy or our personal website. Often they have an idea of what it is that they want, but just not quite exactly. So we love to work with people to get them just what they want for their space. I think coffee tables and dining tables have been mm -hmm. really popular lately. Um, and it's not all the reclaimed old growth that we're working with. Uh, so we do a lot of live edge salvage as well. And, the, and these cloud tables, we call them cloud tables because these cypress trees love the rain and rain comes from clouds and they and they look like clouds. So one of our earliest pieces was we call we ended up calling it the Northwest Bench. There was a piece of wood that was a strange shape, live edge, and we were trying to figure out the base. We just turned one leg, it's not a big deal. But people like it. We've made a lot of them yeah. since then. And no one else has it. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of our furniture starts with a hunt for the material because uh, you can't get it off the shelf. And so we, we find some beautiful old wood and it usually is from some old barn or some old warehouse in Seattle or, or wherever. But it all came from the same Northwest forest that was here long before any of us were. And, and, and it's, you know, living its second or third life by the time you see it. Today we'll be making our famous open air bookshelf, five shelves high. So yeah, the first part of the bookcase when we get down to it is going out to the library and, and hunting through the stacks to find the wood. And typically these, they start as like 18, 20, 25 foot long planks that were the structure of some old warehouse or barn. Then we cut them down to size. Then the next step is to sand it. I usually start with like 60 or an 80 grit sandpaper, which helps bring out yeah. the saw blade marks yeah. and everything because yeah. it exposes some of the lighter wood. And then from there, we can mark the holes and get drilling. Use a template to mark the center of our holes so that things stack up nice. I like to just put a, a square on the wood and that kind of serves as my drill guide because it really doesn't want to be perfectly straight up and down and plumb and then go back and test the fit with a piece of the round bar that'll eventually become legs and we oil it up and we use a teak oil and bookcases typically we just give them one coat of the oil because there's not really like a spill danger or anything like that and then we have to do the steel which we cut it to length roughly and then bend it it's just a cold bending process just kind of the magic of the bookcase is that they're like long staples these legs giant yeah. long um, turns of steel after they're bent they get cut to their real length and then we mark where we're going to drill all our holes then we drill our holes yeah. um, give those a little 
bit of a, what do you call that thing where you? <laughs> oh, the set? No. Oh, the punch? No, you know, the taper little. Oh, the countersink? A little countersink. Jeez, my brain. And yeah. that oh, takes right. the burr off right. of the steel. And then we clean it up using like a wax with a lot of solvent to clean it. So that gets all that oily black gunk off. Added bonus, it waxes the steel. So that gives yeah. it a little protection and helps it go together. So then after that, we assemble the bookcase um, and we almost always do that together. It's much easier with two. You can do them alone. We always say you can do them alone, but if you can find someone to be your helper, it'll be much easier. Yeah, so the shelves are held with <clears throat> cotter pins through the holes and then washers on top that yeah. just kind of make a little ledge for the shelf to sit on. There's some magic that happens when the steel and the wood are together again because the wood by itself is super rugged and elemental and then the, the steel is this industrial, elegant, super clean thing and each by itself is great, but it's only something and then you put them together and then some magic happens and that's what makes that bookcase really beautiful. And here's the finished open air bookcase. Thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna just be solemn and quiet. This is a really important moment in the life of a bookcase. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade for more tours like this one. <laughs>